Doctor. Hello. 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 Malt, salmon, twirls. Here, you want to try them on that cut of yours. Those are very expensive savouries that I ordered specially for Mrs. Walker. In any case, Bobby doesn't like smoked salmon. Well, if that's the sort of muck we're getting, I'm having my supper before I go. Oh, Martha will be sorry she's missing the party, won't she? Sorry? <laughs> She'll be the only one that's laughing when we're all stretched out with food poisoning. Is she away then? Oh, only for a few days. She's gone with her Lily and Wilf visiting his mother. Oh, that'll be a big screen spectacular and all. Martha and Wilf's mother fell out at Lily's wedding breakfast and they haven't exchanged a civil word since. Half a pound of laugh, please. Oh, and I'll have three eggs as well. That's about all I'll be eating tonight. Me and Mr. Caldwell never had a silver wedding. Oh, we did have a wooden one, though. Only we didn't have a party. We went tea dancing. There we are, eggs and lard. Is that all? I'm thinking of closing. Mm, that'll make a change. No, I want the small tin of peas as well. It pinned a lovely bunch of violets on my lapel. I can smell them now. Oh, we didn't make our silver wedding neither. Mr. Sharples passed away in 1937. He caught his death marching about in a wet mac, trying to improve the lot of the workers. And did he improve the lot of the workers, <laughs> Nina? Not mine, he didn't. I've been working hard for my living ever since. That's five and two with what you already owe me. Like poor Bertha Harris, poor soul. Her husband was a big union man when he was alive, but he didn't leave her anything either. No, but uh, he left her plenty while he was alive. Not that the late Mr. Sharples was any alabaster fate, but he had his principles. Five and two, did he say? Yeah, that's right. Right, well, add it on to the other, and I'll pay you tomorrow morning, if we're still here. What can you expect? Well, there's no sense, there's no shame. Well, I think she looks rather nice, seeing as them glinty bits bring out the glints in her hair. Look, she's only got to sneeze, it'll be on the floor. It's too tight, but it'll stop her circulation. Are you going to, um, uh, order again, Nina? Order what? Well, it's your turn. I've finished my drink. <laughs> You'll be lucky. But Tina... Look, I've made that stout last since 8 o'clock. If we hang on for another hour, we can have anything we like for now. Mm. They've got a lovely lot of presents. I don't know about this do, costing them a lot of money. It looks to me as though they're making a profit on it. Oh, les madames, les plumes de l'étonti, madame and elle, from amateurs and all that jazz. Hey, if you want me, just uh, shout one. Yes, sorry. Oi! Hey! Table wants wiping. No, 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 I'm not even being paid for it, either. There's a lovely moon above. Oh, no, a cloud in over when we come in. I'm thinking. They've got mine in front. Come out, You want my present? I gave them a silver salt cellar. Solid. Oh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I am. Depends more on the man himself in council elections, Mr. Swindley. Yeah, well, uh, that's exactly my point. I mean, you must be able to appreciate your candidate. You must be able to, to respect his character, integrity and background. But if you didn't bring your ballot box with you, you said it was all a walk to the polling booth. Mr. Sharples, canvassing for votes was the last thing in my mind. Mr. Barlow and I were just having a very interesting political discussion. Will we not, Mr. Barlow? Uh, what? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I uh, watched this, the fellow without a drink in his hand. Come on, lay me a poison. Oh, well, I, I mustn't imbibe too freely, Leonard, but uh, if you insist, I... I'll take it off the tomato juice. Hey, I tell you what, why not be an ale devil and put some Worcester sauce in it next time? Oh, you think I'd bite? Not canvassing votes, eh? Well, I'm sure he's not flogging yards of elastic. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Albert. Hey, uh, come over here and tell us about your new job. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. It's a bit tiring, you know, but of course then I'm not afraid of hard work. What is your opinion, Mrs. Linday? Me? Oh, very interesting. Oh. For the top thumping session, eh? No, nothing of the kind, Mr. Sharples. We're merely discussing the general situation in patriotic terms. Patriotic? You can talk to your red, white and blue in the face. I'm not voting for you unless I feel like it. 